Hello everyone, welcome back. Tom with Capo Fetish. Today we're going to feature great tracks without a verse and chorus. And what I mean by that, these songs forego the traditional chorus, verse, chorus method of songwriting. So without further ado, I'm going to start off with a, with a song that absolutely defines the subject, and that is Happiness is a Warm Gun from the Beatles' White Album, written by John Lennon. It's the last track on side one. This track in particular has four particular sections Four particular sections that don't really seem like they would fit together, but they do. They make it work. All really distinctive, all under three minutes long. And it also features a really dirty, sludgy guitar solo from John Lennon. Just an absolute amazing song what they cram into under three minutes. Nothing repeats. It's all just four parts and a great solo by John Lennon. Great stuff. Happiness is a Warm Gun from 1968. Another great track that kind of follows a similar pattern from 1997's OK Computer by Radiohead is a song called Paranoid Android. It's the second track on the album. And uh, it, it too has multi-dimensional parts. It's not prog rock, really. It just starts off with this really cool um, little uh, acoustic bit from Tom York. So, some of its high register singing. Then it picks up and goes into this really almost like pixie kind of Nirvana-ish guitar part real fast and dirty. Then it slows down in the midsection for this kind of mournful, chorusy kind of churchy sounding part, which is really the highlight of the song. Then it returns into a more of a jam kind of uh, really nasty sounding kind of sonic youth ending. And it ends abruptly. Just great track from uh, just an amazing five star masterpiece. OK Computer, the song Paranoid Android from Radiohead. Another great track from the third Peter Gabriel album called Melt, a song uh, about Arthur Brennan trying to attempt to assassinate George Wallace in 1972, but left him paralyzed. Peter Gabriel gets into the psyche of this character in the song called Family Snapshot. Great little track. Nothing repeats in this song. It starts off with a great piano and really uh, heartfelt, soulful vocal from Peter Gabriel. It gradually picks up speed with the lyrics changing and the story plot changing. Ends up getting into this really like heavy duty like gallop in the middle where it picks up with a, a really, really good beat and a good saxophone. And it slows down in the beginning and it kind of ends like it did in the beginning with this kind of mournful little vocal from Peter Gabriel. But nothing repeats in the song. There's no chorus. There's no verse. It's just a masterpiece of what you can do with a song without the four, you know, the verse, chorus, verse method. Family Snapshot from Peter Gabriel from 1980. Another great track that was written in 1966. It was on an album called Happy Jack slash A Quick One, depending on what country you lived in. The track is called A Quick One While He's Away by The Who. The track and the version I love is off the Kids Are All Right soundtrack. Their version of this song was recorded at the Rock and Roll Circus back in 1968, the Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus. If you've never seen that video, check it out, or just check out the video alone on YouTube. It's an incredible performance by The Who. Again, multi-dimensional parts, nothing ever repeats. All the parts really go really well together on this particular version. Uh, the Who, probably at one of their peaks of playing live, pretty much crushed it on this version, on the Rock and Roll Circus performance. And while we're talking about it, this is a great album to chuck, just chuck full of great live performances. I think if you had to pick a Who album and wanted to hear some of their greatest live performances, this is the album. You get great tracks from the uh, Woodstock performance. You get See Me, Feel Me, Sparks, Pinball Wizard, just incredible performances. You got a great version of Young Man Blues, which appeared on Live at Leeds. I like this version better. It's even more balls to the wall. And then uh, you have a great version of, uh, what is the other version here I'm talking about here? A great version of uh, I Can't Explain early in their career from 1964. So it's a great album. The song we're featuring here today, though, is A Quick One While He's Away. How about a little Tom Waits from the album Small Change from 1976? Great song called Step Right Up. Great little jazz combo backup beat going on there in the background. There's no chorus. There's no verse. It's really just an auction. It's an auction from Tom Waits. All these things half off, just absurd items on sale, half off, quarter off. And I think what saves this song from, from getting into too much repetitiveness 
is is his vocal it's just hysterical with that kind of croak vocal of his and uh just what he's selling and how he how he phrases things great track here tom waits from small change step right up another great track a lot of people don't talk about from the velvet underground and nico is the black angels death song Great track, a track that got them kicked off a few stages back in the day, got them fired from a few clubs. People could not handle this track. I've always loved it. I think it's really a weird, strange sounding track, almost kind of on the demented side with this John Kill's viola, just and it reads just nonsensical lyrics being spouted off throughout the song. I know it just has this kind of hypnotic vibe to it. Of course, no chorus, no verse. And I think it's just a fantastic track. So the Black Angels Death Song from Velvet Underground and Nico. Here's an absolute masterpiece of a song from 1970 from James, James Taylor's Sweet Baby James album. It's the last track on the album. It's called Sweet for 20G. Again, it has multi multi-dimensional parts, maybe about three different parts in it. It starts off with this really cool, like pop Beatles melody. It slows down a little bit. He goes into this melancholy really cool vocal part with some picking in it and some great backup vocals then it gains steam at the end and goes into that kind of a rhythm and blues section which ends the song just a really really great track of a perfect record and a perfect ending to a great record sweet for 20 g from sweet baby james from james taylor another great track with no really no obvious verse or obvious uh, chorus off the last smith's album strange ways here we come the final album from 1987. The track is called Death of a Disco Dancer. This one too, it kind of sounds like a verse, but it really isn't in the beginning. There's no chorus. Uh, it just kind of, it's almost more like the Smith's jam song, you know? And there's a lot of like tinkering on the piano from Morrissey. Just a lot of great chords from Johnny Marr. Some great drumming from Mike Joyce. Great track and a great album. This is a great album to end their career with. It would have been interesting to see what they would have done after this album. But uh, this was it. Strange Ways Here We Come from 1987, the track Death of a Disco Dancer. A track I've always loved off of the Raw Power album by Iggy and the Stooges, a song called Penetration that ends side one. I've always loved this track. I don't know what it is about it. It has this mystique about it. Um, I think it's that Celesta Iggy Pop is playing in the background, which adds this really cool kind of night gallery vibe to it. You know, there's nothing, it's it just, there's no change in the song. It's just him mo moaning and you know, kind of grunting and kind of hissing and moaning and doing his cat calls and all that with uh, that cool guitar riff from James Williamson. But I think it's that Celesta that I really dig. And it's uh, a great track and it, uh, probably my favorite track on the album. Penetration from uh, Iggy Pop and the Stooges from 73. Another great track off the first modern Modern Lovers album, a song recorded in the 71, wasn't released till 76. The track I'm talking about is Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso was never called an asshole like you. Great track and just just keeps chugging along with that, that guitar from Jonathan Richmond and the piano and just those absurd lyrics. It's just great. No verse, no chorus, just keeps chugging along. I saw Bowie do a great version of this on his last tour. I think it was in 2004 at the Wiltern. Really surprised to hear him do it. Great track. Modern Lovers, Pablo Picasso from 1971, released in 76. Another great track from 1976 is the uh, self-titled song from Station to Station. 10 minute song, starts off with this in these industrial sounds. And then he goes into the Thin White Duke thing in the middle. And another track that kind of picks up speed. And uh, pretty much half the song is that speeded up part. And just a really cool track. Really, really unusual track. An amazing album with six great, six great tunes. Golden Years, Word on a Wing, TVC15, one of my favorite songs, Stay, and Wild is the Wind. Station to Station from David Bowie. And a song that pretty much kind of uh, inspired this video today is a song I featured a few videos ago. And the song is called Mexico by Jefferson Airplane. I found the picture sleeve. A standalone single that was released between the albums Volunteers and Bark. Great track, written and sung by the incredible Grace Slick. 
There's a great demo version of this song you can find on YouTube with just Grace on the piano and vocal. Just she had the whole song down, just like as it's just like it sounds on the record, but you know, with all the accompaniment, it sounds a little different with Yorma and the rest of the guys on it. So great track here, Mexico from 1970 from uh Jefferson Airplane, a song that has no verse, no chorus, just multi-parts that are all excellent. And then last on the list is a great song that was originally written for the Smile album by the Beach Boys. The original version had Brian Wilson singing all the way through, but uh, they did a, a, a re remix, or not a remix, a, um, they did a, a, a different version on 1971's Surf's Up album with uh, Carl Wilson taking over the lead part on the first section of the song, which works really well. And then Brian Wilson, they brought in the part from 67 for the second half. But this is another great example of no, uh, no chorus, no verse, lyrics by Van Dyke Parks, and I think it's just one of their masterworks, and uh, really, really just, um, just an amazing piece of music, really amazing piece of music. So Surf's Up from the Beach Boys coming in as a number 14 song on my list. What are your choices for songs without choruses or verses? You could throw prog, uh, you could throw prog choices in there as well. Those would fit perfectly into this list. I purposely didn't do it because I wanted to focus mainly on rock and pop. But anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Just press that little button and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.